Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Gavin Rafferty from Ulster University. I'm based in the School of the Built Environment. Uh, at the time of sub submitting, submitting this paper, sorry, um, uh, was with my colleague, a former colleague, Professor Greg Lloyd, who was head of school. He is now retired from the university, um, but is still in regular contact. So I just would like to acknowledge his intellectual contribution to this paper um, uh, and to the overall work around the relationship between land use planning and community planning. I also would just like to thank um, the Research and Information Service here at the Assembly for um, allowing us to speak here today on these very relevant issues uh, that are of interest to local government reform and the overall review of public administration in Northern Ireland. So in terms of uh, setting the context, I would like to look at what is community planning, building on what Colin has said in terms of uh, giving us an excellent overview of what community planning is in relation to the Northern Ireland context, but also explore the interpretation of community planning that's happening elsewhere, um, particularly in the Republic of Ireland um, with its style of community planning, and then looking at the relationship between community planning and land use planning. And I'll explain some of those definitions as I go through. So the actual aim of the presentation is to First of all, outline local government reform that's occurring across the island of Ireland and to look at the reform obviously in the north of Ireland and also the Republic of Ireland and to explore the interfaces that's emerging between land use planning uh, in terms of that reform that's happening in Northern Ireland and the introduction of community planning and we could describe that as innovation as something new that's happening in Northern Ireland and look at what's happening in the Republic of Ireland too in terms of its local government reorganisation. And thirdly, then, to discuss um, this vertical, horizontal and lateral dimensions to that potential interface between these operations, these two planning enterprises, that I'll call them, um, that are happening in, in both in Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. So in terms of introducing this piece of work, really we're at a quite unique uh, period in the island of Ireland in terms of the conversions that seems to be happening um, with local government reform, both in Northern Ireland and in the Republic of Ireland, um, we're at this unique juncture in terms of looking at how systems of governance actually work across the island. This allows really for greater consideration of how interjurisdictional cooperation framework and operations might actually work in, in developing uh, and addressing cross-boundary issues, spatial as well as social issues uh, on the island of Ireland. So in Northern Ireland, we've got an introduction of community planning that's happening um, next year, with, at April 2015. Um, and building on what Colin said in terms of uh, it's something that's quite significant in terms of that providing a, an integrative framework in which to make decisions around service provision. Um, and also in Northern Ireland, we're getting the transfer of land use planning powers from central government to the new local um, lands, government landscape. That's something that's quite new and quite novel for local councils to see these suite of powers and how they might operate. But similarly, in the Republic of Ireland, they're also witnessing uh, local government reform uh, and a reorganisation of, of the local government based on the Local Government Reform Act uh, from earlier this year, which is introducing something new to the Republic of Ireland, which is uh, these local economic and community plans, these LECPs which are similar in a way to community planning and it's trying to join up uh, service provision and connect that to various issues around the economic uh, considerations as well as address social aspects as well. And they're to better uh, integrate these with public bodies, community and, um, and social partners as well. Uh, and they're to collaborate and to produce plans on that basis. So in a way they are, they are similar to what's happening in, in Northern Ireland with the introduction of community planning. So the research informing this paper, just to give you an outline of how uh, we've conducted this small piece of research, the, the evidence informing this particular paper has been gathered through a combination of a variety of ways. First of all, looking at our academic literature um, and research that's out there in relation to both land use planning and local government modernization across, across Europe. It's also been looking at and analyzing policy documents that's emerging both in the, in the Republic of Ireland and in Northern Ireland as well. And it's based on a, on a small research project funded through ICLRD, which is the International Centre for Local and Regional Development, that is looking at issues uh, across the island of Ireland. So it's quite um, an opportune time to consider some of these aspects with the, as I've said before, the reorganisation across the island of Ireland. So to further set the scene and set the context, 
Um, let's look at the context of around convergence, what's happening across Europe. With the um, European Union's territorial cohesion agenda, there is definitely a greater consideration given to cross-border cooperations across the member states within the EU. And uh, th we're quite unique in the island of Ireland to have that sort of uh, co cooperation and that land boundary within the island, or on the island, I should say. Also, what's happening is with contemporary governance arrangements, there's a current challenge, I think, for local authorities to consider how to nurture harmonious development uh, and innovative integrated approaches to address spatial as well as social challenges that exist in contemporary society. And particularly looking at spatial planning, um, some might call it land use planning, we'll look at the, the, the distinction between the two in a moment. But in terms of spatial planning, what we're seeing is that there's a, a degree of convergence across member states within the EU around its policy goals. That is what is planning trying to achieve. Uh, and in a way, some goals of that might be about achieving sustainable development, creating resilient communities, uh, dealing with demographic change. So across member states, we've got similar policy goals and issues that we're all facing. However, there's uh, research to suggest that in terms of the policy instruments and the policy outcomes, they are, are not as con they're not converging uh, as well as uh, in comparison to policy goals. Um, so in terms of policy instruments, the way in which decisions are made, the actual practices, for example, within land use planning around impact statements, around um, different indicators that are used, um, they do vary quite a bit. So we haven't got the same sort of level of convergence as we have around the policy goals. And the existing body of literature does suggest the need for further research to look at this area around the convergence that's happening on all these three areas around goals, around instruments, and around outcomes. So in terms of uh, looking at this uh, around those three different aspects, um, it's important to be clear and disentangle some of the definitions that we currently use in and around planning. When we think about land use planning, it's actually about the regulation and forward management of land and property for the broader public interest. And an expression of that really is uh, current area plans and moving forward into the new planning system that will emerge uh, next year in, in the local government context. It'll be the new local development plans and plan strategies and the local policies plans that emerge from that. That will be an expression of land use planning. In a way, strategic planning is a maturation of land use planning. It's taking a more strategic approach, a regional approach to issues uh, that affect um, land use development particularly, and it's much more comprehensive in its style and approach. An example of that might be actually the regional development strategy that we have in Northern Ireland, for example. Um, but also, in a way, the regional development strategy can also be articulated as a shift towards spatial planning, which is something I would argue, um, and in the a planning academy, it, it's still under debate in terms of the, the definitions, definitions around this as well. But spatial planning is something else. It's actually moving beyond pure land use planning and dealing with just land use matters. And it's actually embracing a wide range of different sectoral issues in terms of regeneration, um, integrated service delivery, such as community planning. Uh, it's also about trying to promote connectivity across different sectors to understand the spatial implications of other policy areas. And in a way, then, the maturation of all those different uh, functions relates to community planning, which is trying to provide a more integrated approach to dealing with, this, with the social, economic, and environmental well-being of a particular area over long-term uh, objectives to achieve sustainable development, and not to rehearse some of the definitions that we've heard before. Um, so we've got a reasonable, good understanding of community planning and how it differs from land use planning and spatial planning. But these de different definitions are quite significant uh, in a way. They're very important to understand these different definitions because they are not static and they're not passive. They're actually changing in terms of their own oper op how they're operated. But also the morphology that exists between these different planning enterprises uh, is of interest in how they relate to one another within a particular jurisdiction. And it's against that backdrop that uh, I suppose it's quite interesting to look at the island of Ireland with the introduction of the a new framework for cooperation, that is the spatial strategies uh, for the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, that is beginning to shift towards a spatial planning approach to actually look at um, issues that have a spatial dimension that straddle borders as well. So this is quite interesting to set that context and we look at the changes that's happening both in Northern Ireland and in the Republic of Ireland. So as this diagram um, illustrates, um, Post-2015, April 2015, in the Northern Ireland context, we will have a, a different configuration in terms of our governance landscape. 
Uh, we'll obviously have a, a regional context, which is uh, made up of a suite of regional policies and strategies, such as the Programme for Government, um, the Regional Development Strategy, the RDS, um, the Together Building United Communities, and other policies that may exist at that regional level. Then we'll have the new local authority, which is really trying to focus on aspects of well-being associated with community planning, again around integrated service delivery, and, and the emphasis really on that, the role of the community, the actual community engagement dimension of that is important. And the two main, I suppose, strategies, visions, whatever way we want to express that in terms of outputs, uh, will be the community plan, which is the integrated service delivery, and the new spatial plan, which would be the local development plan, the new land use plan, if you want to call it that as well. So those two planning related documents will provide an overarching framework of vision for the, for the council. And below that, what we'll probably see is some sort of area-based planning exercises, both related to land use planning and community planning. And I've been arguing before that there's a need to carefully consider a community engagement framework that underpins all of those exercises that, that shapes both community planning and land use planning uh, so the citizen understands their role in shaping the visions for the new council environment. And in a way, in, in the Northern Ireland context, um, it is about this new landscape is about trying to create um, a vertical linkage in terms of the community plans and land use plans linking to strategic priorities that may be expressed in those policies that operate at that regional context. But they're also trying to drill down into specific proposals that meet with local need and that, that marries with those strategic priorities. And some of the, the dilemmas we've heard from Colin before around how do we measure that, how, do, how will that might actually play out in practice, it is going to be an interesting area for us to consider in the future. But similarly, if we look at the Republic of Ireland and what's, what's happening there, we can see that there is a similar um, architecture of governance emerging in that they've also got uh, a national and regional context in which they're operating within in terms of a new uh, pl national planning framework that will emerge post-2016. Um, they also have a regional context that's changing there in the Republic of Ireland. Um, and in a way, it, it will reflect this regional context that we will have in terms of that providing that framework f to guide future planning, land use planning decisions. But particularly looking at the local authority, what's happening there is that planning is, land use planning has a longer um, history in the Republic of Ireland being housed within the local government context. And they will continue to produce new city or county development plans, which are similar to our local development plans here in, in Northern Ireland. But the introduction of this new um, uh, policy-making vehicle, which will be the, the local community, economic and community plans, which I've said before, which are quite similar to integrated service delivery um, that we are getting in Northern Ireland under community planning. And in a way, what those two functions are trying to do, that is the, the development plan and the local economic and community plan, is again trying to link strategically with regional and national priorities and to marry that with local need and detailed policy uh, proposals and interventions. And in a way, the two systems are actually becoming very similar and uh, an argument is to say that they're converging in some sort of way, which allows us to look at issues that, that cross the, the border context. Um, and in some of those particular counties, there will be lots of uh, issues around the rural context and how we develop service provision in that particular arena. And in a way, then, the framework for cooperation around spatial issues provides that strategic all-island perspective for f future collaboration around spatial planning and land use planning. But given the reform that's happening both north and south, there's an argument to be made around that there's an opportunity to consider how local services are provided around those border areas and the potential for maybe sharing services, which obviously does happen to an extent at the moment. And in conducting this uh, research project, uh, what's been interesting to find out that there's been various opportunities and emerging opportunities and also challenges that exist um, through this period of reform and the projection into the new governance landscape that is happening across the island of Ireland. Um, so some of the opportunities that might exist um, laterally around the, some of this is that the, the framework for cooperation does provide an overarching context in which to, to start those debates around um, what issues can be considered spatially or socially across the border. There is conversions across policy goals. Both jurisdictions at the local government context are trying to address common issues around demographic change, service provision, um, the, the, the economic growth. There is also an argument to say that the policy instruments that we mentioned before 
are actually converging. There are similar systems across the island of Ireland that are dealing with these particular problems. So in a way, that, that, that's not, we can't consider that as a, a potential barrier given that there's similar operations emerging uh, both sides of the border. But also there's a focus um, that's beginning to emerge, particularly in the Republic of Ireland, of combining development planning, that is land use planning, with this integrated service provision in the Republic of Ireland context, which is this, the local economic and community plans. And it's the same teams that are considering both spatial land use matters and integrated service provision. Um, and there's evidence to suggest that that has been considered in the Northern Ireland context in terms of the role of the land use planner and their relationship with the new community planning operation that's happening here. Uh, and there are evidence, uh, there's evidence out there really around this ad hoc interjurisdictional collaboration that does currently exist across uh, the border areas. Some of the challenges associated with that, and it's coming out strongly in the research, is obviously the political uh, perception or misperception of, of this agenda uh, and how, that ca how that's perceived by political, some political parties. Um, there's also a challenge around these high-level conversations around particular issues like tourism, for example, across how it operates across the border and how we can develop it, policies and innovations to support that. But it's not really drilling down to local need and actually the services that's, that's, that citizens need um, in both jurisdictions. Also, uh, in terms of the, the next three points, really that there's very little support there for this cross-border um, notion around pulling sovereignty to actually creating shared institutions, developing a possible uh, border development zone to focus energies around these issues, around spatial aspects and around service provision as well. And if we look at the vertical dimensions, since highlighting some of the opportunities and challenges that might emerge as part of this reform process, is that in the Republic of Ireland, there's a long-standing uh, tradition of, of dealing with a lot of these issues around land use planning and service provision within the local government context. And there's quite a mature and well-established uh, communication channels from local government to central government that some of the research interviewees uh, articulated. And, and building on what Colin said, really the partnership panel in the Northern Ireland context does provide an opportunity in which to improve those communication channels along that uh, vertical axis. Some of the challenges associated with that particular agenda around the vertical dimension is that local authority partnerships are really missing some key players. Um, and in the Republic of Ireland context, that might mean the, um, the, the new water authority that's set up is not involved in the service provision, particularly around the water supply and the infrastructure there. And in the Northern Ireland context, there's been some issues raised around big government departments uh, and not being named as statutory partners in that relationship that will emerge. Um, and other sort of key stakeholders that might not be there in terms of improving that vertical dimension. In terms of the horizontal aspects, then the opportunities emerge that, particularly in, in the Republic of Ireland, that they, they are emerging the planning departments and economic functions. So there's a lot of crossover and collaboration in, in local government to try and address these particular issues. And an example of that is that under the one director within the local authority, uh, within the Northern Ar or the Republic of Ireland context is that they're merging pl land use planning teams with the economic side to create more opportunities for collaboration and shared understanding of these issues and how they play out spatially in terms of some of the economic challenges. So there's opportunities in the Northern Ireland context as well, I think, to merge teams um, within the local authorities to combine com the new community, community planning officers and the teams associated around uh, their operations with land use planning um, clusters as well within those local authorities, as well as maybe economic uh, officers as, uh, at the same time. Some of the challenges, though, that exist and it's emerged in the research is that there's this institutional insularity in a way that councils sometimes are limited by their ability uh, to look beyond their local geography, and that's just even in, probably in the Northern Ireland context. Most local authorities are very concerned about their own um, geography. Um, so that presents a challenge in terms of even working beyond the, their boundaries and beyond uh, into the Republic of Ireland as well. There's also an, a need for a robust performance management framework. Um, there's been challenges around how do we measure performance in community planning um, and also the uh, effective partnership working. There's some challenges about how partners will actually work and perform in those, that new context. So in terms of drawing the presentation to a conclusion, what you, we can argue is that Community planning, as articulated in both jurisdictions, um, 
It tends to be predicated on the following principles, that it is about providing an overarching policy framework in which to make decisions, and so that it seeks to present, present that horizontal and vertical alignment. Um, similarly, um, there's an argument to say that um, in, in securing both vertical and horizontal integration in each jurisdiction it represents a significant challenge uh, uh, in terms of pooling uh, resources and pulling uh, and possibly creating pooled institutions or shared institutions to deal with local planning issues and to deal with economic issues across the border. Um, there's also uh, evidence to suggest that during this period of change that's happening both north and south that there's an opportunity to develop be better and stronger uh, joint working between local authorities uh, across the border. And it's by taking a more pragmatic view than a sort of an ideological perspective to look at the potential gains that might exist in that sort of collaborative context, which tries to reconcile the vertical and horizontal dimensions that face uh, citizens uh, and the delivery of services associated uh, with particular uh, local authorities. So thank you very much. Thank you.